We lost Chris already. Oh. Okay, right. My presentation's a little bit different. So, if I could just have a little show of hands of who is a real techie person and who's not quite, you know, lots of techie. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to start my presentation with a, a little story. Okay. This guy, me, I was born back in the, the decade that we won the World Cup. That's it. <laughs> okay. From there, I don't remember much about the 60s, but the 70s was fantastic. We had glam rock, we had discotheques, and we did proper dancing. <laughs> yeah, I still do it. I still do the dad dance. Five p for a bag of chips. Yeah, stupid times. Okay, we we um, have things like glam rock. I don't know if any, anybody knows what glam rock is or was a glam rock. Tiz was. We had Tiz was on a Saturday morning. Okay, but it was only on one of the three channels that we had at that point in time. One great thing that happened um, in the 70s, stroke early 80s, was any adult male who was worth his salt had a mustache. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right. People keep on saying, when they see this, that I was a porn star. I wasn't a porn star. <laughs> okay. I was an IT professional. I used to work inside a cage, which actually was a computer. Okay, And that computer was less powerful than my watch, my iPhone. Crazy days. Absolutely crazy. Being on IT support, I was given a phone. All right. This phone is the Nokia Mobira Talk. I was so cool. Uh, it was just, you know, it was the best thing. Like right? to sit on a platform in London, everybody would stare, stare at you. They pointed at me. They say, ah, "He's a city banker." He's a wanker. Back in the early days of getting involved with with Juma, I started off in Mambo. Okay, in 2005, we bought. Bumped into these guys, Nick, obviously you know, Brian. The guy behind me there is, is uh, Robert, Robert, Robert Deutz. Okay, great bunch of people, really friendly. <coughs> Sometimes too friendly. <laughs> okay, but on, on a serious note, this is what we now see, all right, in our homes. We see it out. You know, it's just crazy. Everybody is on their mobile phone. It's crazy. You know, back in my day, when I was this age, we didn't even have computers. I left school and I didn't even know what a computer was. All right? But these guys now, all right, including me, I just can't imagine being without my phone. It's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. My wife actually has something, and she says, check, check. All right, so when I walk out the door, I used to do something. I used to go, what a phone. If I've got my wallet on my phone, I can, I can just take it on the door. What about your keys? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why pass those? <laughs> right. I, I just want a little bit of a little bit of audience uh, participation. <laughs> participation. What's that? It's a book. It's a book. book. It's actually a really good book. Anybody that wants it, come see me afterwards, you can have it. It's the best book that he's written during class. Okay? It's not a book. Okay? That's a book. Okay, that's not a book. That's a library. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, what's this? Anybody know what that is? It's a battery of three. <laughs> <laughs> Very close. All right, it's a bit of paper with a map on it. That's a this was quite, quite cool one. But that is a map. Alright. What's that? It's not a shopping basket. A basket is what you meant to say. Okay? That is a shopping basket. Okay? You know, the kids of today, 
you know, they're sat there, <coughs> they're, they're not reading books, using maps, you know, they're not going shopping with shopping baskets, they're sitting at home, you know, they're couch potatoes. And that's all because something happened on this date. Like everybody here who's in the internet, you know, the developing, etc., etc., should know this date. Okay? We all know this now, we all take it for granted. Okay, and on that date, all right, and the years after that, we started having devices that we could use to actually get onto the internet. Um, caused a few problems, big problems. Okay, and this guy on the, the uh, right hand side here, right, Ethan, Ethan Marco, all right, he came up and coined the phrase responsive web design. So he was quite inspirational in what I do now and every day. He came up with responsive web design. All right, now this is, we, we, we still see this these days. All right, this is the sort of site that I go to and I think, oh, I really cannot be bothered. All this pinching and zooming and clicking and, and pushing it back in, and, uh, it's just absolute, Rubbish, it gets on my nerves, but we still see it today. Responsive web design takes it uh, a step further. Okay, we actually grab all of this in a certain way, okay, with, with responsive web design, and we make it readable, we make it more usable, we make it more friendly. Let's have a look at a website. Okay, this is built on Joomla, just a joke, by the way. Okay, this website here is responsive. I had to pick Microsoft because where we are. <laughs> um, as you'll see, what, what actually happens as we move, well, I don't suggest you do this, you should test on your devices. Mm -hmm. But as you move the browser in, things change, things happen. Okay, it doesn't stay the same size. So on a phone, you'll have to pinch and zoom. So we can see these two blocks down the bottom. In a moment, they'll just pop down into one column. Okay, they'll, they'll stack each other. Now this is responsive web design. So what we're actually saying with, with, with uh, responsive web design is that that site will, will respond dependent on the resolution or the width of a screen. So what's happening there? Several things are happening. The first one is we have a fluid grid. Okay, so it's fluid, just like a sandwich. Okay, so as we grab a sandwich and we push it together, everything inside, all the filling, will drop out the bottom, so it squidges in. We have fluid media. What I mean by that is images will shrink depending on the width of the device. And the last thing, the clever thing, that does all of this is media queries. So what are media queries? Um, media queries are really, really simple. Okay, I said this one going to be technical, and it's not. This is just real plain CSS. Okay, so we have a div, and at this moment in time, right, on a wide screen, this div is white. Okay, it has a background of white. If we had a media query, at a certain point in time on a different device, or right, a narrower device, in this case, 800 pixels, that div will turn white, uh, will turn black, sorry. And it's really as simple as that. Okay, so we can say 400 pixels do this, 800 pixels do that, <coughs> and we can have different media queries for different screen resolutions, and we put our CSS changes inside those media queries. <coughs> There are mistakes that people make. <laughs> One of the biggest mistakes is we have all these different phones. We have an iPhone 6, 5, you know, these, these are all different size resolutions. Okay, we, you know, and then we go on to you know, iPads and Samsung, etc., etc. It just gets ridiculous. When we look on the internet and we search for you know, the ideal media queries that we should be using on our sites, we see something like this. 
okay, which, which, which is pretty good. I think you know, it is, it's great. What I see sometimes is I see a site, I look at their CSS, all right, and we've got four and a half thousand rows of media queries. Because people are saying, you know, my screen is 1,200, actually I want to do something different, it, 1,100, and 1,000, and 900, and then 850, and then 825, and then 800. It just gets absolutely ridiculous. On a serious note, I'm only going to leave this up here a bit, but just remember this. <laughs> okay, so there, there, there is an answer. Okay, and the answer is breakpoints. So what are breakpoints? Breakpoints are when your website is going to break. It's as simple as that. Okay, so if we look um, back at the Microsoft site again, we've got a, a search bar at the top. Okay, as we start to go in at the moment, okay, that search bar is eventually going to hit the, the, the links on the left hand side. So it's going to break. They've taken it away with a media query. So there's one media query. As we go in again, you know, this shopping cart might have it on the left-hand side. It was going to hit the links, potentially. So take it away. There's another query, media query. And as we go in a bit further, we've got two rocks here, which are just going to get far too small. So we do one column. So that's three media queries. That's all we need, actually, right, on this site in particular. Right, you might do a couple more on other sites. I've done one site. I've got one media query, okay, because that's all the site needs. If we look at another site, okay, this, this is a shopping, uh, a shopping site, extremely important. I'll tell you why in a moment. But if we look at it again, as we go in, this guy is going to hit all this text. This text is going to squash all up and get too long. So what do we do? We move things around. You'll see here that the shopping cart come up a bit because on a, on a landscape iPad, we want it higher so they can see it. Text has disappeared. Okay, we now have the shopping cart details down at the bottom. That's cool. As we go in and in and in, down the, um, down the yeah, intro, we bring the shopping cart stuff up. So that when you go on, a, let's say, a, an iPhone 6 or iPhone 5 or whatever, you can see him, you can see the images, you can see your shopping cart, you can click on that button straight away. Anybody know what this number is here? Summary for head of Google. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the predicted spend right, for the UK and the main parts of Europe in 2016. That's absolutely ridiculous. And the US. 245 billion. Crazy, crazy, stupid numbers. That's monopoly. All right, we're looking at a 45 percent increase in 2016 on 2015 last year. Just crazy. So where did Joomla come into all of this? Okay, Joomla is that. <coughs> okay, I use it. All of the websites I do, I use it. The great thing about Joomla is that out of the box, okay, we can make a site responsive. We have a template in there called Protostar. Okay, and Protostar is responsive out of the box. As you'll see now, <clears throat> as we move in, we've got these Apple 1, 2, and 3 images at the top. As we move in, they shrink a little bit. Okay, it's getting a little bit narrow now to have all of this stuff here. So we stack it. That's great. That gives us a real start of one to create our own mobile websites. What's doing this? We have something in, in, uh, in Joomla called Bootstrap. Bootstrap is, is a very simple CSS framework to help us with all these media queries and to stack things and to place things in the right place. 
So on that site that we looked at, the progress of our template in June, okay, we have a, effectively a fluid grid. We bootstrap each of those uh, images, blocks, model, okay, have a span of four. Because our fluid grid is made up of 12, 12 columns. So we're actually saying, put this apple one and that image in the first three. Because four and four, four, and so, so. That's great, and it's, you know, it really, really does get us there. The only issue we have with ProStar and Joomla at this moment in time, using Bootstrap version 2, is that we only have the one breakpoint. Okay, so when we get down to this sort of width, I don't know, iPad, just below iPad, right, we start stacking them. Now, if you don't make your images big enough, I right, to fill that, and they just become too big anyway. Okay, we have a big old white space on the right hand side. This is where Bootstrap version 3 enters. Now with Bootstrap version 3, you'll see here, this is a website I created, launched three, four months ago or whatever. You'll, you'll see here, I'm going to show you a video at the moment. We've got some properties here. Right, in three columns. We've also got a lot of um, search bits and pieces and drop downs and check boxes, etc. etc. <coughs> the difference between Bootstrap 2 and Bootstrap 3 is that when we go in and we see it's moved around, this is actually going to get too big, it's going to get all squashed in the moment. So we get rid of it. But also, we don't stack these two into one, we stack them in two. Two columns of six. And then, when we get down to iPhone 6 Plus type size, we stack them. All right, so, I mean, they can still use the search. It's up there at the top. But it just makes things a lot easier, a lot neater, when people are using it. And especially state agents, because now, a lot of people want to be on the site looking at different houses whilst they're out and about. If they're out and about, they're on the phone. How do we do this? The Bootstrap version 2, they have a class of it called Span 4, which is where we span something inside four columns. With Bootstrap 3, we can still do that. But it's changed from Span to Col MD4. For the sake of argument. The great thing about Bootstrap 3 is that we can actually put more than one class in there. So we can actually say, in this case, on a medium device, I want it to be four columns wide, this module. On a small device, right, when we get down to a small device, I don't want it to be four, I can't fit three in there. I have two, side by side. So a column of six and a column of six. And we can do that for LG and XS, which is extra small, etc. <coughs> Even though Joomla and Box will not do this, there are template codes out there. Whilst doing this, I couldn't think of any. <laughs> okay, but there are others out there, obviously, that will do it. So mobile is extremely important. Okay, why? It's simple. You're losing business, especially if you're a shop. Right? Even if I were to go to a, a design agency to get a new website and I found it on my phone, the same argument, and I looked at it, and I had to pinch and zoom. You know, if they can't do it for their own website, I'm not going to do if you get a website uh, created for yourself. Visitors, you're losing visitors. Right? And you're actually making hard work for yourself. Really hard work. After creating your mobile site, or even before creating the mobile site, go to this web page. I know it's Google and we're in Microsoft, but okay. Alright, put in your web address or the web address or 
the site that uh, people reckon is mobile. All right? If you don't get the green awesome, this page is mobile friendly, and a good image, you're not going to work. It's just not working. Okay, the great thing about it, though, is that Google will actually give you details of what we need to change, or suggestions of what we need to change um, to get it right. You've got to check it here. This is so, so important. Why is it important? This won't show on a desktop. Okay, on a desktop, you'll just see the juice strap, and you'll see the templates, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's cool. And on desktop, I might have been, before I went mobile, I might have been number one or number two or number three in the ranking. Fantastic. On a phone, I wouldn't have been number one, number two, number three now, because last April, I think, I can't remember now, Google started doing this, where it started, it changed its algorithm, all right, and you got ranked higher if you were mobile friendly. And the only way to be mobile friendly is to be responsive or adaptive, but responsive in this case. Um, and check yourself out on that website. I'm hungry, so. Just gonna leave you with a few facts and figures here. Some of the really important ones, and these are all from last year, all right? So, you know, responsive has been around for, you know, three, four years maybe. But last year it was really sort of powering ahead. This one was a really interesting one. Right? People tend to, set up, tend to stay on sites that are responsive five times five point five times longer. Because they read them, they don't have to pinch and zoom and do all of this rubbish. 79% you know, of revenue from mobile sales come from users on a full site, not on an application that you've got to download, or a site that you look on and you've got to pinch and zoom. So some really interesting stuff. So I think what I'm trying to say is responsive web design is so important. Check it on Google and then check in to see your results on a mobile phone to see if you're mobile friendly. And doing it with you, right? Is, <coughs> it's just the way to go. Okay, let's have some questions. You know, I'm not certain on, on Google when it's checking the mobile phone, but is that, yeah. check, is that checking that page or that website? Uh, I think it's checking just that page. Oh. Okay. So you've got a big website. If you've got a big website, but you know, in Joomla we're using the template. If we're doing things right, you should be okay. But you can check other pages about you know, key pages, you know, and it will give you an answer. Kind of, that that one. It's not a new question. Yeah. I believe that if Google marked down a paper page because it's not responsive, they will not mark it down when you're searching from a desktop. No. They will still apply the old ones. No. So there are two kinds of ranking. No, no. no. It's coming quite recently, I think, that it actually uses the same algorithm. It just doesn't show you if it's more friendly. Right? It's going to use it on bugs. So it's so important that you are ready for both. Okay, that's not what I want to do, but I'll check you here. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check as well. I'll, what do you I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> Peter. Yeah, <coughs> I read somewhere that 97% uh, of the mobile phone users uh, don't uh, finish the ordering process, and on the desktop it's 78%. What kind of tricks or things can you recommend to move people uh, using a mobile phone go to your website to uh, fulfill the process on their desktop because it's a pain in the, you know, uh, to, to use forms on the phone. <coughs> Do you have customers buying stuff on your, uh, using their mobile? Can you see that? Or do they just transfer it to their desktop and finish it there? Okay, I, I mean, all I can say, I mean, I'm, I'm quite heavily at this moment in time, as you saw by that website, quite heavily into real estate or estate agent websites at this, this moment in time. Uh, all I can say is that from the ones that um, are not responsive at this moment in time, um, people hate them. 
we went to a, a, a reward ceremony, a, a ceremony um, for the independent newspaper or something. Um, three of the websites that I created right, all got the gold on them. Because people, you know, when they were doing their checks and what have you, and look at all these websites, you know, to you know, ramp them in, in, in the schools, what have you, they were checking them on their desktop, iPads, iPhones, etc. So, what your question was. It's difficult uh, to use a mobile phone to fill out forms. Yeah. Um, so, apparently, uh, your customers don't buy a house on the phone, um, but they might. Uh, 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 yeah, if you have an e-commerce website where you sell small things, you might want uh, to to move the customer from the mobile phone to uh, uh, the desktop to, to fulfill the, the credit card stuff, etc. Um, really? Yeah. Could it be because people are using their phones just to have a look rather than to actually do something? Yeah. They, they're just they're sort of browsing, they're sort of window shopping on mobile phones more than actually. Yeah, so you don't fulfill it on the phone, but you want the customer, so you have to transfer so, yeah, maybe it. Maybe they have no intention of fulfilling it on the phone as well. I mean, I, you know, I, I actually think. To be honest with you, I mean, with, with the estate agent websites that I do, we have a sort of book of viewing type form, we have an inquiry form, an office inquiry form, that sort of thing. Uh, those forms, I'll show you off with Peter, those forms work on a mobile. They just work. You know, so sometimes you pick on form elements, <coughs> it expands a little bit. I don't know if you've seen that. We don't do that. Okay? Um, you know, I use my daughter as an example. She sits there on the couch. She, you know, she doesn't have a laptop. She doesn't have an iPad. She has an iPhone 6. Well, I've got a 6 Plus, but she's got a 6. Um, she buys so much to come and knock it at my door on her phone. She can do it. You know, so I, um, I'm on the fence here. Okay. Uh, I think I think we have to make that point clear. It's as easy as possible. Okay, I'll ask if you can get through. Yeah, there are. Yeah. When you were, if you go back to your property sales, uh, it's really an exercise in did you start from a mobile and work out, or did you start from a desktop and work in? Okay, well, I'm I'm personally uh, on a mobile first. Okay, so what we did with this client is we created him because you know we were turning this site. If you look at this, was a pre-existing site. Uh, this was a pre-existing site. Okay, so if you go to way, wayback.com or whatever it's called, have a look and go back 12 months. You'll see a site which just sucks. Totally sucks. Not responsive, obviously. Okay, this site here, um, we started with mobile first, so it was it was when it was squeezed in, and that's what we went to the client with. That's what we were trying to sell, which is, you know, your site presently. If we look at it on an iPhone, it sucks. We've got to pinch and zoom and do this and do that and the rest of it. We went to him and we just a load of screenshots of that mobile first. So this is what you will see on an iPhone or whatever phone. Okay, that's what we sold to him, right? which was a much, much friendlier uh, experience than what he presently had. Okay, so I, I tend to normally start mobile first and then work out uh, what call, call the screen out. So, and that's normally when I say, okay, we're stacking everything in one in one, in one column. Okay, what can we get out here? Actually, one column is too big, you know, that image is going to be too big, it's going to be down here somewhere. Let's have two. Okay, and then when we get out to desktop, let's have three. And we'll show this in, in, you know, at a certain viewpoint on a certain, I shouldn't say device, because... Is it a gut feel then, in terms of when you start introducing elements at the top of like the search boxes, that's it's just the search engine? Purely gut feel, or...? Um, Usability. It is it's more so usability. You know, it, it's you get a you get a feel for you know what are people going to be able to do on an iPad and for Trent, for example. You know, 
um, you know, when should we, you know, when is it potentially going to break? Okay, when are things going to start clashing? When should we challenge that? But I, you know, like I say, I always start on the one first. I always start on the narrowest, smallest phone and work out. But just to make it so that everything gradually comes into place, so it won't get out onto a desktop. Okay, you can't normally look in the tunnel website. And when you have uh, forgotten the book like in your mobile book, presumably images tend to, chuck images go straight to the matrix. Was that what I remember seeing? So we've still got three. Yeah. We've still got our search parameters. Yes, but when you started out the mobile, it wasn't the case of you started with it. They just do straight links. Get straight to the information, no pressing about it. Absolutely. And expand it from there. Absolutely. Yeah, we started off saying to them, OK, you won't see anything to you. OK, all you're going to see is a burger. OK, and then when we go out, that's when we start seeing links. That, mm -hmm. That's when it starts to look more like desktop. Um, no, 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 just to sort of answer that question, I think it's best to start with mobile first because you have to really think about what information is important to the user and just, just the, the minimal data set, if you will. And then when you expand it out, that's when you add all the extra stuff in. Absolutely. I mean, I, I want them to have a great experience on a mobile phone. At this moment in time, there are a lot of sites, there's still a huge amount of sites, and you've still got a lot of pinch and zoom. It's not a great experience. Okay. Yeah. Pinching, moving it across, going. You know, it's hard work. So I want them, you know, I really think a lot about my world first. Because that's that's where th th this is the killer for this. This is the, the, the killer part of you know a, a user experience, shall we say. So what are the ultimate um width break numbers? Yeah. And is there a website that you can put your site into and it will because there's Galaxy and Samsung's and iPhones is there a site that gives you all the different screens of what it would look like for the different devices? There are. Uh, Google, Google Chrome. Yeah, there's a user console. Well, and that shows you different screens. Yeah, yeah, yeah if, you go to, if you go yeah, to the selector. Responsinator. Yeah, Responsinator. Yeah. Great one. Um, yeah, but I mean, you know, what I normally do, I'm a little bit strange. Um, I think it's the way actually you should be doing it anyway, is I've actually got a side wall. Well, I've got an iPad, I've got Samsung, I've got, I've got a, you know, my iPhone 6, I've all got all the LG uh, windows. So do you have exact figures that you stick to? Now? No, not necessarily. That's because, because you were saying on the site. And some websites, sometimes you would print it and then uh, have yeah. on the menu and many other things. Yeah. So what, what, what I'm actually saying is, you know, we actually have something in, in core in Bootstrap, which is uh, in core in Joomla, which is Bootstrap version two. But it doesn't do everything I wanted to do. So I switched, and, and my template club now uses Bootstrap three, so I can I can stack things at different times. All right? Bootstrap actually has set media query maximum widths. Okay, we don't have to use them. Okay, you know, I, I personally like to override them. Okay, and, and the reason I like to override them is because I normally get my uh, my bootstrap CSS and my JSS from CDN. Okay, mainly because once it's on uh, somebody's computer, and they may have gone to a myriad of other sites where that file, CSS file or JS file, has already been um, used and downloaded and cached. So it's going to make my site really, really quick. Okay, so what I do is, uh, is that I actually override a lot of bootstrap stuff. Sometimes I might not want it to collapse into a different you know, column width at 768 pixels, for example. Uh, what do you use for uploading the images so that your customers don't mess up your website because they load up to... Uh, okay. Is 
Mark Obian? Okay. Ruth, you might be able to answer. Uh, Marco did a brilliant blog post in Juno magazine or somewhere um, about that image thing that you can use. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I can't think of it. I'll, I'll find it if you want to know afterwards. But what I, I do, do with a lot of images. Do you see me as well? You can do a maximum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Size and also create thumbnails as you upload. Yeah, absolutely. There's right. something called image recycle that you can use. They have WordPress, Joomla, and Magento and other extensions. And they are in, um, <coughs> they do exactly they optimize the image and possibly resize them on the fly. And they have extensions, so whenever somebody uses an editor to upload or something, they will make an optimized and possibly resized version. Okay. Yeah, so I, I have something on my server very, yes. very similar to this. Okay, So what it actually does, but let's say this image here, okay, when we actually go to the, um, the, the full details of this property, that image is actually really, really wide. Okay, really wide. <coughs> That's one image. Okay, and s that has been cached effectively on my server in another folder as that image. When we come to this page, this is the same image actually. Okay, but it's not. Uh, because on my server, because somebody has gone here, my server said, oh, somebody's looking at this image, and it's not as big, and blah, blah, blah. Right? So I have another image. Right? So I don't have to create all of these images. As we go in the viewpoint, okay, I can, I've actually set up on my server, um, let's say I've got three breakpoints. I've got, I don't know, 1170, 768, and 320, for example. I've actually have that on my server. So each time that somebody goes to view the site at that viewpoint, it will create the different images. All right? And the reason we're creating different images is that if I pull in the full size one in this space, right, that's going to be you know, 70, 80 k right? Whereas this one is potentially only 15, 18k. And how do you do that? I can't remember. There's a website where you can go and it will give you the script to put on the server and say how to set it up and all the rest of it and I will find it for you. I can't remember what it's called. Is it just called adaptive images? It might be adaptive images. It might be. I thought you got one in for it. Yeah, she's trying to stop plugging. Now your product. Yeah, don't download his product. Okay, I, I found a, a nice result. In terms of your design process, then, are you uh, photoshopping a single column, then a two column, and then a three column layer? Are <coughs> you presenting visuals to the eyes? Yeah, and I'm charging for it. Yeah, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I use something, I don't know whether any of you guys know, it's called Envision. Yeah. yeah. Right. Envision is superb. Yeah. Right, because you can plonk it on there, and it looks, you know, you can actually make clickable hotspots on it. So you can you make a link clickable hotspot, and it goes through to another screenshot. Yeah. Right. Plus also on there, you know, your client, you can really go log in, um, your client can actually put the marks on that screenshot, you can answer him. Yeah, you can have a conversation about it. Yeah, you're right. Fantastic. When, when you were talking about images, or in the discussion about images, the adaptive images taking place just now, is, are you using um, technology you talked about because these are regular radio images? Let's change this. Let's not go there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, obviously at the moment, the main thing is uh, the smart things, isn't it? But one of the we've talked about smart watches is what kinds of content do you display on smart watch? To be honest with you, I'm not thinking about it at the moment. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got a smart watch. You know, it's great for tapping me and seeing if I'm email, I've got a message for the wife or, or whatever, or for directing me on in town. It's brilliant. But I want to look at anything. So, uh, yeah, but for me, for me, a smart watch is like that, clean vintage. Yeah, yeah. 
But no, one, one thing that, um, just taking this a bit further, one thing we are thinking about, um, um, especially with these types of sites, is we're actually talking, uh, we're looking at larger screens, big screens, TVs. You know, this, this particular company actually had their website on a huge, huge monitor. Uh, I mean, it must be 40 inch or 42 inch screen, TV screen type thing, in most of their um, offices, you know, where people can go. And they allow people to come in and actually use the website and search for things and what have you. Then when, you know, they're actually in a property, they have full details for a property. One of the estate agents comes over and starts annoying them. You know, so we are looking at not just, you know, this is a typical <coughs> desktop size. We are looking at big screens. And um, Juicestrap, do you know if it's going to be going, um, going to be ready to go up to Bootstrap 4 when Bootstrap 4 gets released? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, you know, the, the main thing that I'm worried about for, because it's saved a lot of hassle for me and Juicestrap, to be honest with you. The main thing that I'm waiting for is the Joomla to get on the back. Right? Mm -hmm. They're still on version 2. Mm -hmm. Version 2 is great, you know, but there are some things in version 2 of Bootstrap that I can't do, and I want to do it. Yeah. Is that you know when is that going to happen in Joomla? It's going to be three point five. It's going to be more like four, if we're lucky. So that's why I, you know, Juicestrap was created as a bit of a hobby. You know, it was a template I created, um, and you know it's what I used every single time for all of my projects. You know, it's become a bit more of a hobby now, but um, you know the reason I created it was because you know, people. People were wanting to use this extra functionality, this extra um, media query type stuff um, in Juba. And we, we didn't have it in core. But we haven't yet. <laughs>